Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I'm Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Tony, this is one of the shows I've been most excited to do all off season. Today, we're talking about safeties. Tony, what's your favorite safety in Ohio State football history? I'm partial to the one in the 1994 Ohio State Michigan game where uh, Michigan's quarterback Todd Collins tripped over the center's foot and fell backwards into the end zone for a safety. Which is your favorite safety in Ohio State history? Um, what about the Jermaine Gonzalez safety? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a really the good 2000... one. 2000. One, two thousand one, right before one. half. No, two thousand. Yes. yes, that was in the Ohio State had taken a twenty-one nothing lead against Michigan with three Jonathan Wells touchdowns, and then uh, Lloyd Carr subbed in their backup quarterback uh, Jermaine Gonzalez uh, in place of John Navarre, and the snap just went whizzing right past his head and uh, rolled into the end zone. I can't remember if he recovered or if it rolled out the back of the end zone, but it was led to a twenty-three nothing Ohio State win uh, lead at halftime of that game. And then they cruise to a very easy, not at all stressful 26-20 win in Ann Arbor in Jim Trestle's first year. That is a very, very good, uh, very, very good one. But we have lots of time to talk about safeties, Tony, because that's that's all we're talking about today. Yeah. Now, I was part of that 94 safety because it happened, you said 94, right? Was yes. it 94? Yeah. That happened yes, in my end zone. Tony, there were not very many wins over Michigan during that that decade or so, so it's pretty easy to keep the game straight. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was, I was rocking it in block O, and I, and I caused that one. Perhaps if it was the right end zone, but Tom is it? It's not just those safeties. Again, we have now begun our position previews for spring ball. Spring ball starts uh, about four weeks from the time you're listening to this. Uh, you know, Tuesday the March seventh, I think. Sounds so, right. so then it's a Tuesday and it's a Thursday, and then it's spring break. So, um, we've got uh, like seven seven episodes before then. So we're going to go through the positions and we're not just going to go quarterback, running back, we're actually, we're going to change things up so that you don't have to wait for defense and you don't have to wait for safeties because right now today talking about safeties in Ohio state, I'm not sure if you know this, Tom safety driven defense. So this is a safety driven show. Uh, well, none of my notes are good anymore, but this, we can talk about this too. That's fine. Uh, yes, and I have heard something about this being a safety-driven uh, defense. I have also heard, not only is this a safety-driven show, this is a listener-driven show because we ask for questions from you guys to help drive the conversation and answer the questions you guys want to want to know the answers to. So let's start with at Dawson David underscore, which three safeties do you both want to see starting week one and which safeties give us the best chance to win? Tom, I've explained this in the past, and I don't know if it's the the because I this um this, this is two different questions to me, because which safeties give Ohio State the best chance to win, and which three safeties do you want to see starting week one? The way I explain this in the past is if you're playing your your NCAA football, your EA Sports college football, what safeties are you starting? And I think a lot of people will be starting Kai Stokes at free safety, Sunny Styles at strong safety, and probably like Jihad Carter as your nickel. But I don't. That's that's an exciting lineup of playmakers and potential and athleticism. But I don't know that those are all of the three that give them the best chance to win. And I think Lathan Ransom being a senior, obviously he's got tons of experience at this point. He's going to, he's going to be somewhere. And Josh Proctor, again, tons of experience, another senior beyond senior but he's, I think he's, he's kind of already maybe perhaps lost a job, lost his job, perhaps to Sonny Styles, even though it's a different position, what Sonny Styles was doing in the, the college football playoffs, playing a linebacker. But if we are predicting the starting lineup, Tom, if you are predicting <laughs> the starting lineup <laughs> of the safeties for week one at Indiana, who do you think it's going to be? I'm going to say Lathan Ransom at the free safety, the adjuster position. Sonny Styles at the bandit or boundary uh, or strong safety position. And Jihad Carter at the nickel, the, that slot corner nickel position. I think that's probably the most likely, but I think you're also going to see, you're going to see rotation. You're going to see... Josh Proctor, you're going to see Kai Stokes, I think, in the rotation there. You're probably going to see Cam Martinez get some snaps at the nickel spot, too, even if Jahad Carter does win that position. 
this is a I think of all the you know I mean there there are certainly positions offensive line where there are a lot of different possibilities uh, in terms of who could slot in where and you could you could see any of thirty different offensive line combinations uh, at various points this season if things shake out different ways but safety is a spot where they have so much depth that feels like it's you know plausible starting caliber depth that you you know i i think that's the most likely lineup right now but i wouldn't be remotely surprised if you swapped guys around if sunny styles ended up playing a different you know an entirely different role and you had someone else at that bandit spot and we'll, we'll get to sunny styles um you know a little bit later maybe but yeah, you know, it just it feels like there's there's a bunch of different possibilities, but I think that's the most likely one to me right now. What about you? Yeah, that's exactly where I am as well. I just I, I feel like Lathan Ransom is the most likely guy to take over as free safety as that adjuster because who else is there? I mean, it's it's him or Kai Stokes. They they've already kept Josh Proctor away from it once, and they could have put him back there last year. They they kept him on the boundary. At, at the uh, the bandit safety spot, so they've already decided maybe they didn't want him there. Of course, they've already decided before they didn't want Lathan Ransom there, I and mean, they wanted Ronnie Hickman there instead. But this just so I, I mean I, I guess based on those credentials, either Lathan Ransom or Josh Proctor could be back there. I just I completely expect it to be Lathan Ransom, and I don't think. And this will eventually get into the next question. I don't think you can go two years without playing Sunny Styles. I think that would be a complete waste. And so you know, this is all dependent upon him being able to play. But if all we hear about him is, oh, he's got all these different skills. He can do this and he can do that and he can do that. If you don't do any of it, what do you? You're wasting it. So I, at some point, <laughs> at some point, you've got to stop wasting this 18 year old's. Uh, skills, um, you know, as a 17 year old, they had him on the field and they're actually playing him in, in the, the college football playoffs, but you got to stop wasting him, wasting him. So I do expect him to be that strong safety this year. And then as we get into this next question, we can delve into the different ways that these guys could be in there. Yeah. And Sonny Styles to me reminds me a lot of Paris Johnson, where he came in, you know, so hyped and the first year he's you know, sitting and sort of getting adjusted to the the level of play and all that kind of stuff. But then you saw Paris Johnson slotting in at guard when, uh, was it Matt Jones? Someone got hurt in uh, the Clemson game, I believe. And then Paris Johnson's out there playing guard in the college football playoff as a true freshman and kind of the same, same basically trajectory as uh, Sonny Styles. And, you know, in the second year, Sonny Styles, er, Paris Johnson was not playing the position he ultimately would play at Ohio State, where he went moved at left tackle his third year. But the second year, it was just, well, he's so good, we got to get him on the field somewhere. And so he played guard his second year and got on the field. It feels like that may be where Sonny Styles is. Where he plays this year may not be where he ultimately ends up, but you got to get him on the field somewhere. Uh, so the next one from at AWOL Management to Jahad Carter will be hard to beat out. He's a playmaker. I also think Sonny Styles should be in there. Agreed. And probably Lathan Ransom. What happened to Court Williams? I guess let's start with what happened to Court Williams. And what happened to Court Williams was... He had a, an arm or shoulder injury. He was walking around in a big metal bionic contraption for pretty much the whole season, missed the whole season last year. So he, you know, that, that he was kind of a non-factor because of the injury. He's out this spring as well. So, you know, you wonder how, you know, you miss a year and also a spring. That's a lot of time for the younger guys and the other guys to improve their standing and get better and, and go from the young guys to the, you know, be, to the proven veterans. And so we'll see how, you know, how and where he stands on the depth chart coming out of spring with all the other guys being able to practice and play and him still being on the sidelines. Yeah. And the role that you would have for him would be like this safety linebacker, a hybrid type, which they may already have improved upon with Sonny Styles. And so I, I do agree, Jihad Carter is going to be hard to beat out. And even though they have not said he is their number one nickel, Perry Eliano has said I, I you know, he said he has he's got a pretty good idea of how it'll shake out in terms of the three safeties. Um, and again, I don't remember if it was Knowles. It might may have been Knowles when somebody mentioned, "Hey, could Jihad Carter be that nickel?" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, he's played there. Like, he, like he's breaking news to somebody. Like, he's actually he's actually done that. You know, he did that at Syracuse, but he's also 
played a, as a deep safety. And again, we've talked about John Carter. He's played all over the place in, in the secondary, which kind of makes him, and I don't know how good he is. I have not, I've not gone through and done the clips like, like we did with Davis and Igbenos. And, and I actually did this, did it recently with Victor Cutler over the, the weekend of the, of his games against Kentucky at center. And, uh, at left tackle against Texas and Alabama, so I'll, I'll put that out a little bit later, probably probably this week. I haven't done that with with Jihad Carter, and I need to yet. Just find how he plays every 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 play, and just to to get an idea of what Ohio State has. Um, so I I do expect him to be that guy in in the slot. However, I think he and Sonny Styles could work really really well together. Because it could be a situation where those are your three starters with Lathan, Lathan Ransom in there. On running downs, you could see Sonny Styles become an extra linebacker and Jihad Carter just move to the second safety, the second deep safety. Jihad Carter has done that throughout his career. He's moved all around from snap to snap. And so you could keep the same defense on the field and still be able to, well, handle short yardage if, if you're, um, if, if, the offense going you're going against is going up tempo, not allowing you to leave. You can move from nickel defense to a four three defense based on yeah, Sonny Styles is now an outside linebacker. Oh, don't worry. He's six foot four and two hundred and twenty five pounds. He'll be okay in the run support. So like and, and then well now they're now they now they're spread out and they're going eleven personnel and it's like, well, okay, you know, Sonny Styles can drop back and, and be that boundary safety. And you've now you've got your nickel Jihad Carter back playing defending a slot receiver. So like they can move and morph and just you know adjust like from snap to snap with just those two guys. I think it makes them really really versatile and really really interesting. Yeah, it makes them not only much more able to adjust to you know like you said tempo and not being able to change your personnel and not getting stuck in one specific look. If you can have more than, you know, more than one type of look with the same personnel on the field, that's big for that. That's also big in terms of disguising your coverages and not automatically having, well, this is our run support safety and we put him in when it's a running down. And if that guy gets stuck on the field, then if it's a passing down, uh-oh, guess who they're going to go after? You, The ability to have guys do different things makes you a, just mu- a much more versatile and much less predictable defense where you don't have guys in this one specific role and this is our pass rushing guy, but he doesn't hold up well in run support or this is our whatever. That just, that that's something that Knowles has sort of strived for is, you know, sh- confusing, changing the picture for the, the opposing quarterback. That's something we've heard them talk about a lot where you can just, it, with your same personnel, do multiple different things and disguise what you're doing and confuse people pre-snap, change the picture post-snap. That all adds up to more confusion from the quarterbacks. And the fact that they had, they they did not have, what did they have, 11 interceptions last year, I think, but none of them from cornerbacks. You got most of your, most of your INT production out of your safeties last year. I think Tanner McAllister had three of them out of that nickel spot. So defensive ends. and defense, uh, yeah, it was it was defensive ends. I think Steel Chambers had one, uh, but yeah, it was just it was like defensive linemen and safeties. So <laughs> you know that's, but you know when you had it at when you had defensive linemen get interceptions, what were they doing? They were doing those fire blitzes where you know you or you drop uh, you drop a defensive end into coverage, and then all of a sudden JT Tui Mulloway was in a passing lane where you're not expecting to see him. So um, you know, confusing the quarterback, changing the picture, that's where that's where turnovers come from. So. If you can do that and you can if you can have Sonny Styles play in a couple of those different roles without having to take him off the field, yeah, that that is potentially, you know, if they have called him a secret weapon before, that feels like a way in which he could be a secret weapon. The the com- the comparison is always uh to uh, what's his face from um Clemson a couple of years ago. Like, he can Isaiah change Simmons. The, yeah, Isaiah Simmons. He can change the picture on his own. Uh, feels like to me, Tom, maybe I'm wrong. Shouldn't Shouldn't he be the adjuster since he adjusts, makes other, like, I think Jim Knowles has things a little back, you know, backwards here. I, 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 I will probably eventually bring this up to him, especially if Sonny Styles does start playing and playing well. It's like, well, actually, Jim, I can do that to him and, uh, I'm sure he will appreciate that. 
yeah, are you allowed to steal the ball from the opponent if you're the, if you're not the bandit? That feels like that's really that should be the that should be the interception role as the bandit, and then the flexible guy should be yeah. No, I think I think this is all very logical, and you know this is this is something that we should bring to his attention at the earliest possible opportunity. Uh, next one from at B in the arena. We have so much talent at safety. How do you think Knowles slash Eliana will use it? That depth is our edge over almost every other team. Not rotating rotating to stay fresh makes little sense now. I think that, yes, as I said earlier, there's a tremendous amount of depth. And the question is just, where are these guys the best fits? Because you had guys, they were rotating guys last year. And they, one of the big plays against Michigan came when they had not Tanner, not Tanner McAllister, but Cam Martinez in there at the nickel spot. So, you know, you have to be comfortable with the, the, that depth being up to, up to the t- level of the starters. And you would think they should be in that kind of in that kind of range now. I mean, you've got veterans for the most part. You've got the young guys who are sort of up and coming. I mean, Kai Stokes was, you know, we talked on the last show about not overreacting to the spring game, but man, Kai Stokes was pretty impactful during the spring game last year and seemed like he was sort of working his way up into that depth chart or during the course of the season. Sonny Styles obviously got into the uh got into the rotation and got a lot of minutes in the playoff game. So you know, those guys are sort of working their way up as well. There's a lot of talent there, and it's just, you know, yeah, you've got talent, but do you have multiple guys who can play the adjuster spot, you know, more or less equally well, or is only one guy really qualified for that, and then, there, you know, three other guys are really good at the bandit position, but don't, you know, the, there's only one guy at the adjuster position. That's the kind of thing where, you know, it, it's great to play depth, but you've got to make sure that you're not, you don't have to drop off of talent. This is, you know, something that Brian Hartland's talked about. Why did they not rotate the wide receivers? Well, because if you're taking off the A grade wide receivers for guys who are not quite there yet, you're, you are not putting your best team on the field. So you've got to have kind of comparable levels of talent there to be able to play that depth. And we'll see during the course of the spring and summer, how close the, the ones and the twos are. And if, if they are, then I'm sure they're going to rotate those guys a bunch. Yeah, that depth has actually taken a hit over the last year. They've lost Ronnie Hickman, Jansen Dunn, Andre Turrentine, Jalen Johnson out of that safety room. And losing three guys from the same class, that's that's hard to replace. And so I, I think they've, they've got good a good too deep, but it, it doesn't go too far down the depth chart. I do want to see Kai Stokes play because there are some guys who – find the ball and he seemed he sure seemed like a guy that did that time uh, he, he been as a pup as john cooper would say uh last year and took everybody by storm and you you want to see okay now are you are you bam childress or are you malik cooker you know that sort of thing where now can you do it are, are you mike thomas where you do it in the spring and eventually you do it in the season but like, if he ends up winning that free safety job, look out. Like if that would be a sure sign that this guy is legit and look out for a big year. If he just comes in and, and it's like, I guess they could be wanting to keep Lathan Ransom at strong safety. And then so that just makes Kai Stokes a free safety. But who else do they have to play that position? I think it's just like those two, perhaps Josh Proctor. But if Kai Stokes is the guy that they choose, that would tell me, look out. They found somebody who won't hold the defense back. Now he may give up some plays. That's that's part of Jim Knowles' defense. But he may mm-hmm. I think he would make more plays than he gave up, which is something that they didn't have last year at safety. And I'm not saying they have it this year. They they may they may have more playmakers, guys who who still give up some plays, but they'll get those plays back because I don't know how many of those guys they really had last year, and and Ronnie Hickman and, and Lathan Ransom and Tanner McAllister. And Tanner McAllister had, what, three interceptions. So, like, he did make some plays. But um, the rest of that depth, I'm interested to see what Malik Hartford, can he factor in anywhere? Probably not as a true freshman. I, I think it's just the ut- utilization of, what, your your core five or so, getting Josh Proctor and Kai Stokes, how do they factor in? Can, is Court Williams ever going to be healthy? And if he is, we know they really like him. What do you do with him? And is that already being done by Josh Proctor and Sonny Styles as, as more of a run support kind of guy? So I'm interested to see how these things shake out. And then how do you keep from being predictable 
when you have different guys in different roles. Like, okay, Josh Proctor's in, so we know this is this is the the Iowa offense that they're trying to stop, or the Northwestern offense. Where, and, and I guess then it doesn't matter if you're predictable because you're facing somebody who's predictable. But finding the the, the best ways to use these guys to put them in spots to make plays, to put them in spots to keep from being keep from having plays made against you. I don't know that they're overly deep, um, but I do know, like you, you mentioned, Tom, and that's the first thing that, that I thought about, thought of when you're talking about playing depth. If you're playing depth just to play depth, that didn't work last year. In fact, it kind of screwed you a couple times in, in a, the Cameron Martinez thing against Michigan being the one that really stands out. I also don't think you should just write off Cameron Martinez based on uh, some glimpses. Like He has an opportunity to win this job. He's going to be better this year than he was last year. If he wins the job, don't get all doomy and gloomy, and I'm not talking to you, Tom. I'm talking to the people out there. <laughs> if Cameron Martinez wins the job, take that as a good sign. If whoever wins the jobs, take that as a good sign that they have stepped up and done more than they did last year and that they are ready to make this a more sound defense than it was a year ago. Absolutely. If you have guys coming out of the spring with as the clear cut number one, that is a good sign that they've taken a step forward. And, you know, to your point on Kai Stokes, if Kai Stokes wins that free safety job, uh, that might be the most exciting, encouraging thing you could have, because then that frees up Lathan Ransom, Josh Proctor, Sonny Styles to be at that boundary spot. I mean, Sonny Styles isn't going to play the free spot, I don't think, but, he, you know, at the at the boundary spot. And then you've got Lathan Ransom, you've got Josh Proctor as guys who are going to be in that rotation somewhere. If Jihad Carter or uh, Cam Martinez wins that that band the uh, nickel spot, that's probably a very good thing because that means they're comfortable with where those guys are. One thing that's an interesting factor this year is last year the safeties weren't really tested for the most part during the season because they played a bunch of really bad passing offenses. When they played Notre Dame, Notre Dame was a bad passing offense. Penn State was just kind of like, they were fine. They were a Sean Clifford Penn State team, which had some okay talent at wide receiver, but not incredible. And I think they might, their tight end might have been hurt that week. And they just, you know, they weren't an incredible passing offense. And just, you go through the Big Ten last year, especially the Big Ten schedule that Ohio State played, and there just weren't a lot of real dynamic passing offenses there. This year, Notre Dame's going to have a new offensive coordinator. What is that offense going to look like? We don't know, but it's going to have Sam Hartman running it instead of, uh, uh, it wasn't Drew Pine. It was the other guy last Tyler year. Buckner. But, um, Tyler Buckner. Yeah. So you're going to have a more dynamic quarterback. You're going to have a new offensive coordinator there. What's that going to look like? We don't know yet, but it's probably going to be a better passing offense. You get Maryland at home. You got another. Uh, you get another year of Tua. Tua was pretty effective against them last year. That's somebody to keep an eye on. At Purdue, you got a whole new coaching staff there. What is that going to look like? We'll see. I think you got a new. I think you got a new quarterback there this year as well. Penn State, you got Drew Aller now instead of instead of Sean Clifford. What's that going to look like? I don't know. We'll see. At Wisconsin, you've got uh, a whole new off- offensive coaching staff. Uh, Phil Longo, who is the uh, new offensive coordinator there for Luke Fickle, is a very up-tempo uh, offensive coordinator. This is not going to be necessarily the same ground-and-pound uh, Wisconsin offense with a crappy quarterback that you're used to seeing. What will that look like? We don't know, but we'll find out. There's just, there's a lot of, you know, Minnesota, they've got Minnesota at home. Minnesota's offense kind of sharing changes by the season. Michigan State, we'll see what Michigan State is. But we saw what Michigan did last year against Ohio State. They're, they're going to get tested in the passing game a lot more than they did last year. And that's going to really fall a lot on the safeties uh, to, you know, to, I think this is going to be an even more safety driven defense than it was last year. Because they're going to get tested a lot more in the passing game than they did last year. And don't forget about Western Kentucky before Notre Dame. Western Kentucky throws the ball all over the place. Uh, Hudson Card, the new quarterback at Purdue. Luke Fickle's quarterbacks, he brought in like three transfers from all different places. Tanner Mordecai, I think from what SMU, Nick Evers from Oklahoma, one or two others to battle for that that job. Expect them to, obviously, like you said, throw the ball a little bit around the place. Uh, Minnesota, they should just come in and run the ball. So th- there, you'll have that. Yeah, and, and we'll see. This this could be a year where the defense is much better, but they give up as many passing touchdowns as they did last year or more, just because you're playing better competition, which the good news is 
that leaves you a little better prepared for when you're playing better passing teams in the CFP potentially. But you're you know you're going to get tested more, and and this they're going to that whole defense backfield is going to be under a little bit more stress this year, I think. Uh, last one from at Chris underscore Estes one could C J Hicks be a fourth at force at either safety or the jack position this coming season? I, I think in general, Tony, when I look at position moves that they might consider, I always think moving to a smaller, faster position. So if you're a linebacker, I don't think they're necessarily moving you in the safety direction. I think it, if if you were going to move him in one direction or another, it would be more towards you know closer to the line of scrimmage rather than further away from the line of scrimmage, just just in general, not even specifically with C.J. Hicks. Yeah, no, I agree completely. And I wasn't sure whether to put this one here or keep it with the jack position and the defensive ends, the defensive line, because I I think C.J. Hicks could be something interesting as that jack role. But when I asked Jim Knowles if there's a possibility that the the linebacker room could provide a jack. He was like, no, I don't see that happening. So uh, I don't know how much time we need to spend on this <laughs> because I, we, we, he's not going to be at safety. Doesn't sound like he's going to be doing any of the uh, that role as a jack or even a Leo. Uh, so it looks like he's just going to play line, linebacker. He's going to have to be happy playing linebacker. And when we get to the linebacker show, we're going to have to talk about how. How can you make him? Like, this is another guy. Do you really want to waste two years of him? And on special teams, and he did not play. He played a single defensive snap last year. It was all special teams. He didn't play in the, the first game. Then it was all special teams from that point on. And I understand you've got two returning starters that you love, and we don't need to turn this into the linebacker show. But another guy that you're going to have to find some snaps for, Tom, I could see you frantically looking for the Peach Bowl <laughs> snap counts from our buddy Dan Hope. And I'm telling you, I have that tab open constantly, and I'm I guarantee you it's just special team snaps, isn't it? Uh yes, all special team snaps for CJ Hicks all season. So yeah. Yes. I would have I would have I would have thought for sure he was in on defense. I was sure I remembered him on defense, but no, apparently not. No, no. So maybe this year. We'll see. Uh big spring for him, obviously, and this is his opportunity. But again, that's the linebacker show. That's got well, like a week or two away. So anything else on the safety time before we get out of here? No, I think we're good, but we have uh, plenty more of these shows coming in the uh, next few weeks, so we'll uh, have plenty plenty to talk about in the lead-up to Spring Ball, and uh, yes, as Tony said, bold predictions, uh, Black Stripe draft, lots of opportunities for me to make him feel bad about himself, so you have that to look forward to in the coming weeks. Do we? And of course, if you want to hit either of us up on Twitter and throw a question in about a position preview we haven't done yet, feel free to do that. We'll include those questions there in, in the future show, so thank you all for tuning in. As always, BuckeyeHuddle.com. Become a member. Say hello to us there. YouTube.com uh, slash BuckeyeHuddle. Say hello to us there as well, although I don't know that we are as attentive there. You can try it. So anyway, that will do it for today. Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll talk to you guys later.